So what does it mean that investigators were tracking calls to and from Michael Cohen, the president's personal lawyer? Tom Dupree, former deputy assistant attorney general under President George W. Bush, joins us with some analysis. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you, Shannon. Okay, so let's talk about this because there was early in the day a report that it was wiretapping, that they were listening to his phone calls and maybe even his phone calls with the president. There were concerns about attorney-client privilege. Now what we're told is something called a pen register where they just look at the log of phone calls to and from, how long they lasted. Who would have had to approve that? Is it two different tracks, or would they both have to go down the same track? They'd have to go down a similar track. To get something like this, you need approval both within the Department of Justice, in this case, I think, at a fairly high level within the Department of Justice, and also a federal judge to sign off on it. What strikes me about this, Shannon, is even though we are finding out, apparently, that his actual conversations were not listened to, the fact that they are tracking who he's calling, who he's receiving calls from, is very anomalous in this context. These are investigatory tactics that you usually see when prosecutors are going after a drug baron or something like that. Extremely unusual to do it for a lawyer and unique to do it for the president's lawyer. Now, I talked to Judge Andrew Napolitano, our senior judicial analyst here earlier tonight, and he thinks they may have done more. Here's what he said. Do you really think the Justice Department is going to admit that they listened to phone calls from the president? They may not have recorded, but I assure you they were listening. If they were listening, they can't use anything they hear as a basis for an affidavit of probable cause or in a prosecution, but it can send them seeking other means to obtain evidence to support that. So we talked about this idea of parallel reconstruction, where if you find something you're not supposed to have access to, you then try to go find a legal way to get back to that same information. He thinks it's just his opinion that that may have happened here. It, you know, we're going to find out, I think, in the months ahead. And look, they are walking a fine line here. I mean, if there were people listening in on these calls and they found things out, I think the Justice Department is going to have to do a lot of work in order to effectively erase the taint of acting on information that arguably they shouldn't have accessed in the first place if that's what they did. Okay, so last night we have Rudy Giuliani, the newest member of the legal team, talking about this payment uh, to Stormy Daniels and reimbursement to Michael Cohen. Uh, there there has been a lot of debate about whether or not that was the plan last night or if it became the plan in the middle of the interview. So the president tweeted out three very specific tweets, a very carefully worded, some um, legal uh, definitions and things used this morning. And part of one of those tweets, he said, um, despite already having signed a detailed letter admitting that there was no affair, he's referring to Stormy Daniels, he said, prior to the violation by Miss Clifford and her attorney, that NDA, this was a private agreement, money from the campaign or king, campaign comp contributions played no role in the transaction. So he's trying to say there was no campaign money here. Well, Norm Eisen tweets this, if Cohen loan was not one to campaign, then it was one to you, meaning to the president, and you omitted it from your personal federal financial disclosures for the period. That's a crime under 18 U.S.C. 1001, and we have filed a cr criminal complaint with DOJ. Norm Eisen is with crew. They file a lot of complaints with regard to politicians. What do you make of this? Because people are saying now Giuliani did this to get him out of trouble with a potential campaign violation, but it could create another problem. Yeah, look, and, and first of all, I don't profess to know what the communication strategy here is. I mean, I think we've seen over the last few months, sometimes they might go in different directions. With regard to campaign violations, I will say a few things. Number one is that proving intent in these types of cases is extremely difficult. You basically have to show that the defendant not only did the act, but knew exactly what he was doing, and really an attempt to circumvent federal election law. And I think in this case, there's certainly evidence that it may have been carelessness as distinct from an effort to circumvent federal election law. In this area, there's so much that is gray, that so much that has not actually been determined by the courts. And of course, the punishments can range from effectively a slap on the wrist to more serious criminal sanctions. So my guess is we haven't heard the last of this, but mm -hmm. bringing a prosecution based on these facts, in my opinion, would be a real challenge. Okay, so this is separate and apart. This Michael Cohen, Southern District of New York, federal case is different than what the Mueller investigation is doing. We got word today that Mueller has now requested 35 blank subpoenas or 35 sets, so 70 total blank subpoenas dealing with the Manafort case. Um, there are a lot of folks who say, listen, that's just standard procedure. They would do that anyway. But they say in the way he's gone after Manafort and this referral on Cohen and some other things, they're being very heavy handed. This is a different kind of case and they are very much targeted in making sure they quote unquote find something. Yeah, and, and look, I agree, first of all, that the subpoenas, I wouldn't read too much into that. That's fairly standard prosecutorial tactic of getting these blank subpoenas. I wouldn't read too much into that. I will say this, though. I think that what we have seen with Mueller, both as to Manafort and then, of course, the referral on the Cohen side, is an extremely aggressive prosecutor who's not afraid to play hardball. We talked earlier about how they're treating Michael Cohen as they almost would a drug lord. Same thing with Manafort. Mueller is determined to prosecute this thing aggressively, take no prisoners, and I think 
think that people who are defending these clients in these situations need to appreciate that. Mueller is serious and he is playing mm -hmm. hardball. Yeah, it certainly looks like it. All right, Tom, always great to have your legal insights. Right. Thanks, Thanks for Shannon. stopping in.